New for 2023, the Firecuda 540 SSD steps up to the competition with their first 5th gen PCIe NVMe SSD, bringing you much faster transfer rates for an overall enhanced performance, especially when it comes to gaming. Taking a quick look at the box, you'll see we have the 2TB version here, but it's also available in the smaller size of 1TB too. Even though we don't get as many capacity options as the Gen 4, I'm content with the 2TB size, especially considering 5th Gen tech is still relatively new. Specifically made for gaming, it has a sequential read and write speed of up to 10,000MB per second, compared to the max 7,300MB per second of the previous 530, claiming 50% faster speeds than the Gen 4. On the back in the small print, it's great to see it's still backwards compatible with the Gen 4 motherboard, which is great if you haven't yet made the upgrade. But luckily, my PC has that Gen 5 SSD slot, so I can test it at its best possible performance. In the bottom right corner, there's a small sticker insisting that you use a heatsink for optimal performance, as it doesn't come with one pre-installed. I'm yet to find a version of the 540 with a pre-installed heatsink assuming this will come along later as they have done with the 530. Removing it from the box, you get the SSD itself that comes in this little plastic pouch with your rescue and warranty information and a few brand stickers. The SSD is really easy to remove from the packaging and from first look, it's double-sided and quite slim, perfect for upgrading laptops. Of course, it is compatible with the PS5 as the SSD is backwards compatible, but it will still only perform as well as the Gen 4 SSD at this point, so it may be worth just using the 530 for this purpose. The SSD roughly measures around 3.2 inches long and 1 inch wide, which is pretty discreet, and with it being quite thin, it will fit okay with those thicker thermal pads. When it came to installing it, I just needed to change out my thermal pads as they were a little damaged. Fitting it into the SSD slot was pretty uncomplicated for experienced hands, but considering I'm quite new to this, I did fumble a few times working with such small parts. This is the first time I've replaced my SSD, so I will be interested to see how this turns out, and of course, how much it improves the system. It was great to see the drive was recognised within the Crystal Disk software, but as it wasn't appearing in the file explorer, I just needed to set it up properly and initialise it within the disk management, only taking roughly a few minutes to complete. So getting into use, I had a quick look at the data on the Crystal Disk Info software, and saw everything was running just as expected. It was interesting to see the heat difference between the two SSDs on startup or running idle, with the C drive running at around 20 to 25 degrees, and the Fire CUDA running between 20 to 30 degrees. Of course, once I started running a few tasks, the 540 did reach some highs of 47 degrees, but I didn't see it climb past that over a few hours I used it, which was great compared to some of the other Gen 5 SSDs that I've used. Doing a quick read and write speed test, the numbers were brilliant considering the read and write speeds reached very close to the 10,000 gigabytes per second target suggested on the box. The write speeds were a little lower than anticipated, but to be honest, it's what I've come to expect from SSDs in the past, and the estimated speeds are still on par or better than the previous 530. Moving around a few files, I got a great insight into its true performance. I wanted to show how well it moves files from an external drive to an SSD, so I took my Seagate BASIC drive and copied over a sizable 64 gig folder containing video files for the test. I know speeds are still dependent on the drive and the cable that I'm using, but to be fair I was still pleased with the 7 minutes it took to copy considering my standard SSD would normally take around 20 minutes. When moving around the same folder between my two internal SSDs however, the copy speeds were faster than I'd ever experienced. Copying 64 gig from the 540 SSD to the C drive took as little as 25 seconds, and moving the footage back from the 540 took roughly the same time. As a video editor, this could be a game changer for me when transferring large files, and I know it's probably not much of an upgrade if you're already using a recent SSD, but for those who are considering making a big leap from an older SSD, the power in the 540 can really make a significant difference. Finally, I wanted to see how well it would download and run a game from the Xbox Game Pass. I chose Forza Horizon 5 as it's quite a big file size and it's pretty high performance. 
Downloading it directly from Ethernet, I did see an improvement in speeds, reaching between 15 to 20 megabytes download speed and completing the download and installation within an hour. I could run the game at extreme quality, which was great, and generally saw some improvement in launch speeds, but even though it's hard to judge from just playing this one game, I could notice the difference in performance, so there was clearly a positive change from my previous SSD. So after putting the 540 through a few basic tests, I can honestly say it's been a refreshing change. The read and write speeds are a significant improvement on my last SSD speeds, and the installation and setup was very smooth and quick. Of course, I need to use it a bit more extensively over a longer period of time to truly understand what this SSD can do, but from the outset, I've been very impressed with the outcome, especially considering the Gen 5 tech is quite new. So if you are looking for a new SSD to future-proof your PC, then this one is definitely one to watch out for. So what are your thoughts on the Seagate Fire Cuda 540 SSD? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Box, where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.